Welcome back to movementprofessional.com. Today we're going to be tackling the subject of trying to enhance the performance of the diaphragm. So if you're not familiar with the diaphragm, it is, let me just move the camera a little bit, in location kind of right here if I get under the, the rib cage. And when we sit for long periods of time in the slouch position, it gets very tacked down. All right, So it actually wraps around uh, the whole thoracal lumbar region, which is where the upper back meets the, the lower back, and it's kind of right under the, the rib cage there. So it's a very important structure for stabilization. You can think of it as the, the roof of your stabilizing muscles. And again, if you're sitting tight down like this in a flex position, it's just going to be very, very restricted. And if I try to use it, and me inhaling and using my diaphragm would be trying to push the belly out, I really can't do it. I have a difficult time doing it. So if I can use my diaphragm better, I tend to be in a better position, a more erect spinal position. And now I can get the belly pushing out. And then as I exhale, the belly will come in. So as we'll see on the video, uh, there's a couple strategies just for practicing that. One of them is just taking on a better position. Uh, and then we can actually use a little bit of resistance and some facilitatory techniques to get that firing. All right, so take a look at those strategies uh, and then comment, post any questions that you might have. Start in the chair, or in this case, an ottoman. So just showing that is the location of the diaphragm. So really right here and here, kind of the arc of your rib cage. And that's where the diaphragm is, you know, kind of right in that area there. All right, so when we breathe, really what ends up happening with the diaphragm is you're breathing in, it gets nice and wide. And when you breathe out, it gets a bit narrower that way. So that is why, as you'll see, when we breathe in, the belly is actually going to get bigger and when we breathe out, the belly will get smaller and draw in. All right, so let's look at the profile. All right, so you got one hand on the belly, one hand on the chest. Hand on the belly, hand on the chest. Now the chest should stay just as is. So that hand up here on the chest is just to show, to give you feedback that the chest isn't moving so you're not breathing f too much from lifting the rib cage but more from the belly and that's really what we're just trying to isolate the bottom hand obviously will be feeling the diaphragmatic excursion out and then back in and right, so on the inhale we want to breathe in through the nose okay so we're on the exhale there and here I cross my legs and the reason I want to do that is because now I've dropped my knees below my hips and you should be able to see that this line here from my ear down to my hip has you know, gotten straighter and it's also there's an increased ease for me to hold that position so sitting with your knees below your hips is a good strategy to maintain an erect posture when back in the other position, so if you rewind it to where I was, I had the knee in line with the hip. I'm a little bit more leaned back here, and my head is kind of in front of my shoulders a lot more there than when I cross the legs. I'm able to find a little bit more of an erect posture. So that makes a straight, straighter line, not perfectly straight, but it's certainly straighter, and I can tell you it's much less effort to hold that position. All right, so from there, we continue to work on this breathing. The inhale goes in through the nose, so we can get a sense that the breath is coming in through the nose, and then it follows, oops, follows down into the belly, and the diaphragm gets bigger and pushes the belly out okay and then as we breathe out we're drawing in and we're taking about 10 seconds if we can or ultimately we want to get to about 10 seconds on that exhale 
All right, so it's important to be able to lengthen your exhales to calm down the nervous system. Uh, we're looking to get our parasympathetic nervous system, which is our rest and digest system, a little more active, and our sympathetic nervous system, which is our fight or flight response, a little less active. Uh, but more importantly, we're really just trying to get you know, more oxygen going through the body. So there's many, many benefits to practicing diaphragmatic breathing. Uh, another one, it is part of your core musculature. So it's like you can think of it as the roof of your core. So getting that active when you're inhaling is actually stabilizing your midline when you're doing intensive exercise or just even sitting in a chair. All right, so going from there, let me see what it looks like in sitting. Breath in, and then breath out. Nothing moves in the spine, just moving from the belly. All right, from there, we're going to progress to the ground. Not necessarily a progression, just a different way to do it. In a lot of ways, this is easier and a good starting point is to start on your back. So in this case, we're going to use a book, nice heavy textbook, an orthopedic book. Put it right on that diaphragm, right under the arc of the ribs. And making sure there's no movement in the chest. Same idea. Breathe in, and the book lifts up. That's your breath in as the book lifts up. And then take your time, about 10 seconds, breathing out as the book sinks into the belly. Okay, you can do it if you don't have a book, just use your hand. Okay, hand goes up. Take about 10 seconds to have that hand sink into the belly. Alright, and whether you're doing this in sitting or lying down, or any position, it's good to just set a timer, maybe 2 to 5 minutes, and just practice. Think about nothing else but what's going on in the belly. Last thing we're going to look at is, we're going to use a ball and lie on the stomach. So that's a very soft ball, specific ball for myofascial release. And I took a little air out of it. So you're going to put it right in that diaphragm. All right, and then we're going to lie and smush it a little bit initially. All right. And then we're going to breathe in. And now the ball acts like a little bit of resistance, almost like your diaphragm is lifting weights. All right, so your breath in will push the ball out of you, and then the breath out will allow that ball to sink in deep. All right, so this is also a form of stretching for the diaphragm. On that exhale, you're kind of stretching it, releasing any restriction, and diaphragm does get restricted, especially if we're not using it for breathing from our chest. We're living sedentary lifestyles. There's no need for us to find increased oxygen, so we just end up breathing from our chest and not moving the diaphragm very much at all. So there's three strategies for learning how to get the diaphragm working for you and being able to utilize it to get more oxygen going through your body, improve stabilization. Uh, so any questions, just post them to the website movementprofessional.com. See you next time.